Hello there everyone and welcome to my ZBrush tutorial. Uh, this is going to go over a uh, brief introduction to ZBrush for those who are not familiar with ZBrush already. Uh, first I'm going to go over this toolbar on the side. When you first open up ZBrush it's going to look like this and there's going to be this little toolbar on the side. If anything happens to where you no longer have this toolbar in the side over here, like this, it'll look like this. You can always come get it again by clicking this little circle with an arrow in it under the tool menu. So now that you have that over here, first you have to have some sort of model. If you don't have a model selected, you're going to be drawing in this 2.5D space and you're going to have some squares. So to get a model to work on, click this little golden S and then click one of these shapes. It doesn't really matter what shape it is. You can click the cylinder or sphere or whatever. And to make it show up in the viewport, you need to drag it out to draw it in the scene. So uh, for right now, currently you cannot work on this. In order to do anything with this. See, right now if you try to turn it around, zoom in and out, do anything, it just draws a whole bunch of other cylinders. I guess it's not really a cylinder, but you get my point. In order to work on it, you're going to have to press T. That's the hotkey for it, but if you don't press T, you would be pressing this edit object button up here. So because there's all these other objects on the screen and there's only one that is movable, to get rid of that, you're going to have to clear the canvas. And to do that, you press Control N, as in Nancy, and that will clear it and you will have your model free of any other obstructions. So now you're going to be able to move it, zoom, and rotate. Um, to rotate around your object, you will click the background and just drag it with the left mouse button. To zoom in and out, you're going to hold down Alt, hold down your left mouse button, and then let go of Alt, and that will zoom it in and out, depending on where you move your mouse. And to move it, you simply just hold down Alt, and then let go of Alt and the mouse button at the same time when you drag it around. So I'm going to briefly go over some things that you might use. You will definitely be using this sub toolbar quite often if you're using ZBrush. Here you will have several things that are called sub tools. And these kind of work as separate models within the same scene. Typically you will see different sub tools for things like clothing and armor and sometimes you would have separate body parts. Like you may have separate eyeballs from some skull. So you would most likely want to keep that separate with different subtools. Unless you don't, then you can always combine them into one subtool. So here, there's the rename subtool. So you click that and the subtool that's selected can easily be renamed. So yo, 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 yo. So on all low, you can make all of the subtools the lowest subdivision level. If you have a couple of these and you duplicate this, and you press Control D to subdivide it. Sometimes when you're working with these primitive objects that you get from ZBrush itself, you want to make sure to make PolyMesh 3D to make sure that you can actually work with it. Say I want to subdivide this a couple of times. You can tell that it's subdivided because it is SDiv3 and you can kind of slide in between um, currently, let's turn off these other ones. Okay, so you can see this is a little bit smoother than, say, this one. You can still see the hard edges, so you know it subdivided a little bit. Okay, so if you have multiple subtools in a scene and you want to make all of the subtools on the lowest subdivision level and you have way too many to go through all of them and do it all manually, it's especially useful when you have a whole bunch of subtools with high poly counts and you would really want to do um, click the all low button 
to bring them all to the lowest subdivision level without having to go through manually to do that. So here you can see we have this one selected. This is the one we subdivided. And see here it's brought back to the first subdivision level. Um, if you ever want to delete the higher subdivision levels, you can click delete higher. If you end up, you know, wanting to delete the lower subdivision levels, you can always delete lower. The hotkeys to go in between the subdivision levels are shift D. That will go to the lower subdivision level. And to make it higher res, you click D on your keyboard. And of course you can always go into the geometry tab to mess with that. So here you can auto reorder the subtools by vertex count. So these are duplicates of each other. So they both have eight around 8,000 polygons. Here we've subdivided it two times. So it has three subdivision levels. So it has more vertices than the other two. Say we wanted to bring this down to the bottom of the list. If we click auto reorder, it'll bring it straight to the top. If you click it again, it's going to reorder the subtools in the scene the opposite direction. Here is list all. It will list all of the subtools. So if you click it, you can see all of the subtools that start with the letter P. So currently it's showing two. And it will show the two that you are currently not selected on. So see I'm um, selected on yo 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 one. So here it has two and three that you can easily choose. If you click copy, it will copy the current subtool that you are selected on. And then if you click paste, it will paste the copy of the subtool. If you click duplicate, it will go ahead and just make a duplicate of the subtool that you selected. Clicking delete will delete the subtool that you have selected, but this is not undoable, so you have to be sure that you really would like to delete this. Append will allow you to choose another model to append to the scene, and it will append it to the bottom of the scene. However, if you click insert and you insert a model into the scene, it will insert it right underneath selected model that you have or the selected subtool that you have. Delete other will delete all of the other subtools and it's not an undoable operation so I'm not well I guess I'll do it anyways. So I'm gonna select the um, little squiggle here and delete all other subtools. There it is it's just a squiggle now. I'm just gonna duplicate that a few times. Oh here's delete all so if you just want to delete all of your subtools you can go ahead and click that button. Under the split tab, you can choose to split hidden. If you hold Control Shift Alt, you can hide. And you can't tell that it's hidden because these other subtools are on. But here you can tell I hid that. So, um, oh, this has some subdivision levels. Okay, just delete those. And then you can split hidden. So now you can see that I have half of the springy object and it is in separate subtools so if you want to work on it that way you totally can. So group split. Um, this uh, There are things called polygroups and I can get into that in another tutorial but if, you, if I turn the polyframe on and I just mask out half of the spring and then I go ahead and create a polygroup out of that so I group masked. So now I currently have two polygroups. One is red, one is this other color. I'm not really sure. <laughs> so if I go ahead and do that, then click group split, then it will go ahead and split the spring based on the polygroups. First I'll talk about split to parts. So if the subtool is made up of multiple mesh shells, it will separate it to those separate shells. So say if I go ahead and use the, let's see, where is it? If I go ahead and use the insert cube brush on a model with no subdivision levels, and I go ahead and draw it in there, you can tell it's um, a totally separate model, but it's just 
contained in the same sub tool. So I turned the polyframe off. All right, so in that case, you would want to go to split two parts. So when I do that, it totally splits the cube out from the spring. So split unmask points is kind of similar to split mask points, depending on what you are trying to do. Here, I'm going to go ahead and mask half of the spring. You can mask something by holding control and holding your left mouse button to drag out a square. So now half of this is masked. I have to work on a model with no subdivision levels. And then you can split mask points. So that will take half of the model and split it completely. So both of those are kind of similar. It just depends on which part you want to mask and split and which parts you want to leave unmasked. They're kind of similar in my opinion but there are two options. Under the Merge tab, there are a couple of options. There is Merge Down, so you can go ahead and just merge down to the subtool underneath it. So now it's a complete little swirl. Merge Similar Subtools will go ahead and merge similar poly count subtools. I will save the project tab and the extract tab for another tutorial because I want to kind of go more in depth on those because the project function is probably one of my most used functions in all of ZBrush. So I really want to make sure I explain that well because it's very important to me. <laughs> and in another tutorial I'll go over some of these other ZBrush tabs because there really is a lot of things in ZBrush. But I think if you just really study hard and just practice a lot, I think you can really get it down. Thanks for watching my introduction to ZBrush tutorial. I hope it helps and be on the lookout for some of my next tutorials because I have a lot to say about ZBrush. <laughs> uh, if you like, you can go ahead and follow me on Facebook at Shannon Zhao Art. And also I have a Patreon. That's patreon.com front slash Shannon Zhao. So for my loyal Patreon subscribers, I will be putting out tutorial videos more often and they will be exclusive for those members. So um, I hope to see you there. See you guys next time.